York, New York, big city of dreams. I'm coming, coming, I'm coming straight out, out. New York, New York, big city of dreams. What's going on? It's Jailers from Nick of Time Show here giving you that Nick's talk just in the nick of time. And we are back for another episode. A little week early because you know the, the events that are going on the following week. But who do I have with me? None other than the man, the myth, the legend, the guy with the stats and the facts. Ryan G's in the building. Damn right he's in the building. All right, and we got to catch up on some Knicks news and Knicks tidbits for you today. Um, also, yo, there's some interesting like NBA news that's happening right now that you know I I, I think I think we should touch on, right, Ryan? Yes, sir. Um, first and foremost, the NBA draft is coming, man. Yes, sir. It's about that time. Woo! So I know everybody's hyped. NBA draft is only a few weeks away. I haven't heard any new rumors about who the Knicks are going to get. Um, Allegedly, what I've heard from Ian Bigley, who was on the Knicks Film School podcast, the Knicks have been really mum about who they plan on picking and who they're not. All these rumors are, are most likely rumors. The only thing that can really be confirmed is really the Knicks had, you know, dinner with Kerry Lewis, which is I'm very happy about. But <laughs> <laughs> obviously, for obvious reasons. But the Knicks and the NBA will proceed the NBA draft very soon, November 18th. So definitely watch out for that. Also, Ryan, Knicks free agency, not Knicks free agency, NBA free agency is going to be starting soon as well. Uh, so. Hold, hold your hats. The 21st or the 22nd, around that time, NBA free agency will start. So if you want to, you know, if you want to look about the free agents that are available, you can definitely check out, you know, our free agent list on our YouTube channel to see what free agents are available and what we think about them. But um, get ready for hats, man. It, it, it could be a bumpy ride. Yes, sir. Hopefully we do, we do the right thing. And also, <laughs> Ryan, big news for your heads up, Ryan. The NBA season. It's looking like it's going to commence December 22nd, so get ready. It's about that time. Yes, sir. Finally. Finally. Knicks basketball is going to be back. Exactly. Despite LeBron complaining, I play too much (laughs) I need some rest. (laughs) Despite that noise, (laughs) the NBA will be back this year, most likely. That's what it's looking like. So, Clap it up, Knicks fans. I know I'm, I'm ready for basketball, and I know you guys are too. Facts. And and then the fact that, like, Knicks fans got that extra, extra, extra rest. Oh, so they should yeah. be so they should be more than fresh and ready to go for this upcoming season. Like, there's no excuse. Like, these dudes, these dudes should be ready. Ready. I want to see Mitch step back threes. You know <laughs> what I'm saying? <laughs> I want to see Dotson resigned. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I want to see a lot, man. I, I, I want to see RJ looking like Jimmy Butler. If you if you missed the, the RJ Jimmy Butler comp conversation, definitely check that out on um, rebuilding New York, uh, the Miami Blueprint. I talked about RJ Barrett and comparing his game to Jimmy Butler's. I know it sounds ridiculous, but when I talk about it, it makes sense in your head. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Also, Nick's Nick of Time news. Happy belated birthday to my guy, Ryan G. <laughs> Happy birthday to you, belated to you, brother. Thank you, thank you, thank Pass you. And, 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 and your birthday's coming up. You know, Scorpio season. We in the building. Hey, Scorpios, Scorpio you know, all day. Mm-hmm. <laughs> in the building. Yeah, my birthday will be Wednesday. So by the time this episode drops on YouTube anyway, yep. uh, it will be should be my birthday. And by the time um hits on Dash Radio on SoundCloud, it won't be there. So happy be almost birthday to me. Once yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's get into some stuff. Now, some updated news. There's some updated rumors that they've been hearing about recently. Um, one is Christian Wood. Christian Wood has been floating in the rumorville since February, Ryan. Mm-hmm. Then you really didn't hear anything, but now the rumors are back. Yes, sir. And not only are the rumors back, but 
I'm waiting for that noise to pass in the background. <laughs> Not only are the rumors back, but Ian Begley reported it. So when Ian Begley speaks, Knicks fans, Knicks fans, you got to listen. Because nine times out of ten, if Ian Begley speaks, he's done his research. All right? Yes, sir. And I actually finished listening to a pod on, on the Knicks Hills Who Pod where he talks about he only reports about 10% of the stuff he hears because he constantly, you know, figures out who's saying it, how they're saying it, how likely are they to be right, and he cross-references with other people, and that's how he comes with his facts. So... Gotta make sure you check those sources. Check them damn sources. All right. So Christian Wood, according to some in the New York front office, have been enamored with Christian Wood. The Knicks have been monitoring Wood for much of the season prior to, prior to the coronavirus outbreak. Many teams were monitoring Wood ahead of the trade deadline, but New York was one of the few teams watching the Pistons regularly after the deadline, an indication that the Knicks had a high level of interest in the forward. So pretty much what B B Big Lee is saying is that Knicks are still in pursuit of Christian Wood and they feel like he's high on the list. Now, uh it's interesting because you know Detroit they do have a little bit of cap um to resign him, even though they're not they're not really paying him that much as of today. But it'll be interesting to see if they will pony out the money to pay them, but it, they might, which they might, because they spent a lot of their time in the off seeding, offloading big contracts and trying to rebuild. Mm -hmm. So he might, Detroit might pay him the money to keep them. On the other hand, we talked about last week, Christian Wood was on Instagram asking what team he should go to next. <laughs> <laughs> So there's a pretty good chance that he can end up relocating. Yes. Um, any thoughts on Christian Wood? Well, I mean, it's similar thoughts that I've said in the past. Like Christian Wood, you know, he's a good young player. Um, especially you know he showed what he can do after the um Pistons traded away Andre Drummond. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, he was a, he was pretty much a walking double double, twenty four and ten, I believe, was his average. Yeah, after after Andre Drummond was traded, he averaged twenty four points and ten rebounds a game, yeah. shooting fifty four percent. Pretty damn good. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, there's flashes that you know he could potentially be a double double guy. You know, in the NBA, if he's given, um, you know, the opportunity to show what he can do, and mm -hmm. you know, the Knicks. Are definitely are definitely in need of a big man who can definitely score. He can you know step out and shoot the three at times, right? And also you know, and he's not a bad defender as well. You know he's pretty decent on the defensive end as well. So it's no surprise to me that the Knicks are, you know, they have him high on their list and looking forward to signing him if you know if possible. But the problem is that you know, Pistons have a lot of money. You know they're not a, they're not really a team that's cash strapped at the, at the moment, and you would think that if a guy's performing for you, and he's giving you twenty four and ten a night, you know that's somebody that you want to bring back. So I think right. it's gonna be it's gonna I think it's gonna be a tough um it's gonna be tough to get him, but you know shoot why not try to go after him if you know if you think you have a chance to get him. Yeah, the thing is with that Ryan too is he was scoring twenty four and ten for that stretch, and we, we talked about yeah. this last week. Season average 13 points a game. Yeah. You know, very different from season average 24 and 10. You know, so you still have to prove it long term to, to for him to be worth something like a Julius Randle bag, you know? Yeah. 18, 19 million. If you, you know, or even 24 and 10, you probably get a little bit more than 18, 19, to be honest with you, if yeah. you average that, right? Um, But I've talked about this before. The... It's one of those things where it can be a funny fit with Mitch because he is a, you know, he's a, he's a big man that can shoot threes, but not necessarily, you know, a three point shooter, but yeah. a, a big man that can shoot threes because, you know, he only, he only shoots what, around two, three pointers a game. Yeah. So. yeah. Almost three. So offensively is not the ideal pairing to go with Mitch, you know? Uh, which is 
which is my hesitation on this flip side of it he's so he's young he can grow into the role um you're hoping that the way he shot threes this season wasn't a fluke because it wasn't like he was shooting like that every year yeah. and he can keep that up now if he keeps up that production then it's worth it then it could be worth it to give him some money and who knows you know at this point he's not making much on the open market how much how much can you really pay that man who only who who averaged 13 points a game is 12 to 13 million going to do it is he going to you know shy away shy away from detroit if you give him that back or does it or is it going to be like a little bit more or is it going to be 15 Mm -hmm. or so so that's that's really the question but you know, tremendous upside, 95th percentile as a roll man, 85th percentile in spot of threes last season. Hope you can keep that up. Mm-hmm. Um, 37, 37% from three overall. Yeah. Uh, has a potential as a three level score. And also, you know, the stats he had weren't empty stats. Mm-hmm. He, he, he was a positive net rating, plus 2.2 when he was on the floor. Yeah. So. He should be. I mean, he might be worth. He might be worth a gamble. Mm-hmm. Um, and pairing that to Mitch, I it's cool with me. It's 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 maybe not my top choice off the bat because I still have questions. Mm-hmm. But it, it's the choice that has the most potential to work out long term yeah. out of the other power forwards that are available. Yeah, who which are like the little Gallinari. Who you know, he's a three point sniper. You can definitely help on the offensive end for Mitch. Um or even a Marcus Morris or a Bertans, who also might be available for around fifteen million or so, who is a great moving shooter from the three point line, can shoot from every which way, and even show flashes of being a playmaker when he was at the San Antonio Spurs. You know? So my two cents. Anything else to say about it, or even go on to the next? Yeah, um, just just to, yeah, just add like a little two cents to it. Like I do see a concern because, like for example, you know, you want RJ to have the space to actually operate on the floor this season. Yeah. And, and you and you already know when um Mitch and Julius Randle was on the court at the same time, it clogged up the lane, and you know that made it harder for RJ to operate on offense. And Christian Wood, you like seeing that he only attempts like maybe almost three, almost three three pointers a game. Your concern is that Wood is going to occupy the lane like how Mitch occupies the lane, and then it's going to be pretty much, you know, last season all over again. Right. You know. So your hope is that you know because I think what he shot around thirty eight point six percent from three, if I'm not mistaken. Mm-hmm. So he's he's a capable shooter from three. It's just a matter of like if the Knicks sign him. Will he be able to adjust his game to where he's going to be on the perimeter a lot of times rather than, you know, actually be in the lane, especially when Mitch is on the court at the same time? Yeah. So that's the only really, that's only the really, the only, the only concern about Christian Wood. You know, if he's able to adjust, then that's a great signing. But if he's just going to clog up the lane with Mitch and then RJ is going to be, you know, his game's going to get limited as a result, then, you know, that's not good. So, yeah, like that. The value of the signing hedges on can he hit that three point pointer consistently, so we don't have the same problem we had that last year. Yeah, um, you know, if we're signing him to be a starter, or maybe I don't know, they didn't want him to be uh, behind Julius Randle, and uh, who knows? You know, who knows? yeah, that's, that's what they're thinking. But you know, the good the only really good thing is if you thinking about pairing Mitch and and him to, together is Mitch's defensive rebounding is not good. And his defensive rebounding is in the seventy six percentile. So pairing those two together on on that side of the ball might prove beneficial for the Knicks and us. So <laughs> Yeah, that's all I got to say about that. Pretty much. Yeah. Your next next subject for the head top. Uh Justin Holiday. Justin Holiday. Uh it's, it's been reported. That the Knicks are interested in Justin Holiday. Ian Begley also is reporting that. Um, there might be some competition for him as well. Indiana definitely wants him back. 
Um, currently, Justin Holiday is making a little over four million dollars. I think four million a year. He's expiring contract. So, what would it take to get Justin? Would be a question. Or, or you know, is it even worth bringing Justin Holiday back, considering what the Knicks have, and also considering what free agent twos are available? Um, your thoughts on that, Ryan? Justin Holiday is interesting because, at least the one year he played with the Knicks, I felt like he was a key piece. With Absolutely. the Knicks, you know, yeah. coming off the bench and everything. So, you know, like, he's a capable, like, I mean, I think with Indiana this year, he shot 40.5% from three-point range. So, he's yeah. his, his three-point shot's getting better. And, you know, the Knicks do need shooting, you know, guys who can definitely shoot the three. Mm-hmm. Um, um, It's just that, like, with I, I'm not sure if Justin Holiday's really what the Knicks need at the moment. Okay. You know... Like I think he would be a he would be a good piece to add, you know, especially if you want to, you know, make your bench a bit deeper and things of that nature. Like yeah, just how they would be a good piece to add. But I don't know. I'm not sure if he's really the piece that the Knicks should be looking for at the moment, you know. But but I mean, hey, I mean, it's one of those signings where it's like if the Knicks sign him, I'm not gonna, you know, I'm not gonna be mad. If the Knicks don't sign him, I'm not gonna be upset. You know, it's one of those signings where it's like, if we get them, we get them. Cool. Right. If we don't get them, it is what it is. Like, yeah. Here, yo. First and foremost, I want to say I was very pissed the year we signed uh, Tim Hardaway Jr. and gave him seventy-two million dollars. I still remember <laughs> the episode seventy-two million the hard way is on SoundCloud, yeah. iTunes, and Google Play right now, still to this day. Word. <laughs> It's not even on video. That's how long is how long ago that that video that uh episode was. Well, it wasn't even on video yet. We were just in, in our in our in our boys' room yeah. recording. <laughs> <laughs> and that same year we signed Tim Hardaway Jr. Um, I remember being pissed because we didn't even call Justin Holiday. I remember him saying reading. I remember reading that the Knicks didn't even contact him, and he was surprised. And I and then I also remember being super pissed that he only signed for like four million dollars or two million. It was like something stupid, and I was just like, "Wait, I'm thinking we have to resign him. He did well. I'm thinking it's going to cost something around seven. And he signs for like three, like two pennies in the, in the, in, the, in the Happy Meal. And I was like, "Bro, I was super tight." <laughs> But, I mean, what, what you expect, though? We had um, Steve Mills running operations at that time. So, I mean, what did, what did we, you know, what, what were we supposed to expect with Steve Mills and, you know, running the show? So, right, exactly. Also, at that time, I was hyped about Dotson being on, on the, um, the, the squad. If it was, I think I was talking about Dotson on the episode as well. Yeah. Fast forward to now. Um, Listen. It's funny because after he left the Knicks, his three-point shooting got kind of shaky. You know what I mean? It wasn't like he was shooting lights out after he left New York. He when he was that year he was in New York, he was shooting around 35% from three. Yeah. Um then I think he dipped. Yes, he did to 34.8% with Chicago. Right, which is still okay, like slightly below average in the NBA. Because average is thirty five percent, right? But then this, then it dips to like thirty two, which is like not good. But this year, contract year, he hits forty percent from three. And to me, sometimes when I see players shoot their best in a contract year, I get a little worried because <laughs> I'm like, oh, he went that bad. I get a concentration is there. Da 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 da. Is that going to hold up long term? That's question one, Ron. Question part two of this my thought process with Justin Holloway though. If this shot works out well and he's able to stay at that consistency, it works out for us. Because the the reason why someone like the Knicks would want Justin Holloway is because of Tom Thibodeau and Justin Holliday's defense. Like he he would be a decent two way player. He does not shoot at the high volume I would like, like the Joe Harris. And uh, Bogdanoviches and, and and those guys and Malik's and 
but what he does give you that those guys don't have is uh, the, a defense, the defensive potential. Like he's a two way player, and that's why I want him here before. Like when you're looking at his his numbers on cleaning the glass, block percentage is an 89th percentile for wings. Steal percentage in the 93rd percentile for wings. So, and he's a good defensive rebounder. So there's not a lot of people who's going to give you two sides of the ball. And we already know that the Knicks, um, as of today, their biggest problem has been one-dimensional players. So I can definitely see why Justin Holiday would be of interest for the Knicks. Now, here's another thing. Um, so I, I, I'm with Ryan. I wouldn't mind the signing, but I also still have a soft spot for my guy Free Dot. Free <laughs> Dot. Exactly. I feel like he plays pretty good defense. Um, but the numbers don't lie. Uh, the length of Justin Holiday's arms have aided him into getting, you know, good block and steal percentages throughout his whole career. Yeah. But um, it's, it's more about whose who's toes is he stepping on if he gets here, pretty much. Solid signing. It'll be a solid two-way signing for us for the Knicks if we end up getting Justin Holiday. I, after talking out of my mind right now, I, I can see I can see that being a solid signing for us. Yeah. It could be. If he's able, if he wants to lead the Pacers. That is true, too, because Indiana has a good team, even though coaching situation, they just recently hired a new coach, so... It'll be interesting to see, you know, what system that coach will implement and things of that nature and if he fits into the system and things like that. But, you know, I mean, you know, you're playing for a good team in Indiana. It's like, why would you leave, really, unless, you know, you're going to get the bag elsewhere, so. Exactly. But hopefully, you know, that's the news that leaked because that might be one of the easiest people to get. Because you know, there's less red tape, but who knows how hard or not that's going to be to get him. Um, I see a lot of people saying it's not going to be easy to get him because because of the ties to Indiana and he likes it there. Mm-hmm. But um, I still would like the New York Knicks to go after somebody like uh, Bogdan Bogdanovich. You know, yes. like guy who averaged 15 points a game, uh, 3.4 assists a game, 44 percent field goal percentage. I, uh, I think we should go after a guy like that and. The thing with Bogdanovich too is his is not even just that he's a three point shooter because I know we talked about Joe Harris last week, but it's not that he's just a three point shooter; it's that he can also make plays. Yeah. And for a guy who's you know a guard, he has a pretty high assist percentage for a guy who's not a guard, which is. Something to be, you know, to be desired for for Nick squad who needs playmakers. Let's, let's, let's get real. We need playmakers, and you can play him at point guard in a pinch, in like a <laughs> in a pinch. I wouldn't do that for you know, yeah, the whole I mean, game. Yeah, more more of a two guard, but yeah, you, you, you know, play him at point guard in spurts. In spurts, so I can see that I can see you know some nice passes to bitch every now and again if you want to throw a teams off a little bit. I don't know, you know. So, you know I can see that. I can see that. Yeah. Go the only thing is with him too is um, can the Knicks get him from the Kings? Because we already know with the Kings and uh, Bogdanovich and Buddy Hill, they they value him a little more, even though Buddy Hill um has the bag yeah. as of right now. Like Buddy Hill is making over a hundred million uh on his contract, while my guy Bogdanovich is up for uh you know a re-up and he's barely scratching um uh 12 million right now so <laughs> yeah and with the stats that bob bogdanovic had last season he's gonna get the bag sooner or later so exactly so like as of now today he's probably worth 14 million to 16 million in that range um the sacramento kings they already offered him you know four years for 52 million which is around thirteen million, and he hasn't really touched that offer, so it it makes you think that you know he might want a little bit more. So maybe fourteen, fifteen, sixteen million might be the range to get him. Yeah. Um. The thing is, they might be willing to pay it. They are cash strapped a little bit. The Kings, 
they don't have that much cap space, but they still might be willing to match it. Uh, but we'll see. We'll see. You have yeah. to throw some money at them and see if they be down for it or not. Yeah, and, you know, speaking of the Kings, um, I think one situation we do have to watch out for is the Buddy Hill situation because if, if you look at rumors coming out of Sacramento, they're saying that Buddy Hill isn't happy over there at the moment as well. So you have to monitor that situation as well if Buddy Hill's going to be up for trade or anything like that too. So, so okay, so would you be down for a Buddy Hill trade? You, you down for trading for Buddy Hill? Here's my thing about Buddy Hill. Like, okay, he's a good shooter. That is something that the Knicks need. But I feel like he's getting paid too much for somebody who's just a shooter. You know, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, he he's not a great defender. He really doesn't do anything else but shoot. Yeah, and he's earning near one hundred million, like one hundred million for his whole contract. So to me, it's like. I feel like the Knicks can get shooters at a discount where they yeah. don't have to, you know, pay, you know, don't they don't have to bring in a contract that, you know, they're where they're going to have to pay a guy nearly over 20 million a year just for him to shoot the ball. I agree with you there, yo, for sure. Like the only I might consider I might consider it if they're attaching something to it. Yeah. Like, if they're going to attach some picks, I would, I would, I think I would consider it. The thing is, is like, he, he's worth a lot of money, but he's not completely useless. So I'm wondering how willing they'd be um, able to park with picks. I think they, what pick do they have, Ryan? I know we can look that up real quick if we want to. Yeah. Um, yeah, we would have to look that up. Um, let me see. Like, I believe they have, like, the, tw- I think it's, like, the 12th pick, the, and, like, two picks in, like, the second round, like, 35th or 40 something or something like that. If they do that in the 12th pick for it, I'd definitely be, I'll jump on that. But I don't know if that's asking too much. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, give me that. <laughs> that might be a little too. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I'm looking, I'm looking at the daughter right now i'm trying to see where they pick okay yeah they have the 12th pick yeah i would definitely do that now i don't know if they would be willing to do that because they're sacramento kings and they're still trying to build up so i don't know if they'd be willing to do that they'd probably be more willing to shake out shed a maybe a lower pick or something or, or try to give that to a team more desperate for shooting who wants to get over the hump yeah but it's just me being dream in dreamland really <laughs> yeah i mean i would be more i like i would definitely go after buddy healed if he was shooting near like 45 percent from three mm. like a big number like that where i know that if he's shooting the, like whenever he throws up a three i know that's going in at least nearly half of the time then i then i would then i would definitely trade for him because i'd be like you know what yeah, he might cost around 100 mil for four years, but at least I know when this guy shoots the ball, that's cash money every two threes he takes. Yeah, but he kind of, you know what? Let me not, let me not, because we kind of stumbled on this conversation. So I'm going off the top of my, my dome, but let me double check before I say something crazy. <laughs> If you're talking about his three-point percentage, he's only shooting 39.4% from three. All right. Yeah, 39% from three is pretty good. It is. Pretty good. 75th percentile. All right. 75th percentile as far as wings who can shoot. The, you know what it is, Ryan? Yeah. Here's the Here's the swing. Here's the swing. I don't know what happened this year. This is a gamble. Buddy Hill, this could be the down year for Buddy Hill. Like, if you was to, if I was a, I, if I had to gamble, I would say those numbers would rise in, in a situation where he feels more appreciated. It could be. Because when you look at his stats before that, right? Yeah. Yeah, before that, he shot 41%, which is in the 94 percentile according to Clean the Glass. 
The year before that, uh, 41% again. The year yeah. before that, 39%, which is in 91st percent of the class. So three, the last three years before last year, he shot in the 90 percentile um, from three-point line. Now, granted, maybe the lesser role might have something to do with it. Um, so that could be it as well. The coach could probably be like, you know what? That maybe the defense and the lack of playmaking doesn't, you know, warrant me to start you, and I'm putting you on the bench, and that's why it dropped down to something, you know, more manageable. Yeah, which is still pretty damn good as a manageable shoot. <laughs> you know, <it> was like, <laughs> like he can still shoot better than anybody on the team. Yeah. <laughs> mm. It's tough though. It's tough. You know what? I'm gonna yeah. say no. I'm gonna say no. I definitely get what you're saying. I'm just saying that if I'm going to pay a shooter that kind of money, yeah, those, do something you, else. Yeah, those percentages that you told me around where he shot like forty three percent, forty two percent before this season, mm-hmm. I need I need him shooting like that. I need him to be a legit sniper from three that's shooting over forty percent. And and I know that every time he throws up a shot. That's money. You you know, like, I, I'm not trying to pay a guy that type of money and he's shooting only 39%. Right. And, he, and, and, he, and then he doesn't offer much more than just him shooting the ball and scoring. Right. I feel you. I understand. Okay. I, I can live with that. Buddy Hill, look, tell me, guys, what you think about Buddy Hill? Would you sign him? I know that I, I feel like he's not talked about that much. But I, I do feel like some Knicks fans might actually want him on the team. Even though I think I'm leaning towards no and more of a safer thing like Bogdanovich, who just might just be harder to get than Buddy Hill at this point. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let me know what you guys think in YouTube comments, SoundCloud time, and, and all that noise. All right? Um. Also, oh, my, Malik Beasley, too, man. I don't know if you should talk about Malik Beasley or not, but Malik Beasley is somebody else that could be a nice little value pick. Like maybe $12 million a year who average 20 points a game in minnesota yeah got hurt but it's like a three-point sniper seems like he can be like an i don't know sneaky sneaky all-star like as somebody keep your eye on on it it, it, it remains to be seen because it's kind of like the whole it's kind of like the same situation with christian wood where it's just a small sample size of him actually playing that well right you know, so it remains to be seen that if he, if he could keep up, you know, where he would score like nearly 20 points a game, you know, shooting good from three point range and things of that nature. But if you look at it, if you look at him from his time in Minnesota, you would think that if I have an opportunity to sign this guy, I'm going to sign him. Absolutely. I, I can agree with you more. And the fact that, you know, the Nuggets are, are sneaky, Ryan. They are <laughs> sneaky. They have they have their system of drafting down to a T. Yeah, they do. They do, and they hit, which they is partly hit. why they hit a lot of times. <laughs> which is partly why the Timberwolves are even in this position in the first place because he got to the Nuggets with a stacked team, Jamur- Jamal Murray in them. Yep. Um, they drafted him with a fractured leg, a la uh, homie. Homeboy who had the bad problems, who, who everybody's drooling over right now. Michael Michael Porter, Michael Porter Jr. Jr. They pulled the Michael Porter Jr. move, drafted a dude with a fracture leg to stash in the background. You know, <laughs> he starts balling a little bit because he can shoot threes in college. Comes here and still can shoot, shot like around thirty eight percent. Gets traded, and now it's just kind of like. Because of COVID and everything, the Timberwolves are in a situation where. They didn't really get a chance to see what he can do fully, and it, and it got cut short. And it might be to everybody else's advantage if, me, if Malik Beasley shakes loose. Yeah, but I, but luckily, but luckily for the Wolves, he's a restricted free agent anyway. So if a team does throw money at Malik Beasley, at Malik Beasley and they want him back so bad, they can match it. So they could definitely match it, but also, um, also Malik, uh, the Wolves, you know, they're not. They don't have the, the the most amount of money. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? They don't have the most amount of money. So they might feel like it's a gamble. 
to to pay him throughout 12 or 13 million with only 13 games to show for it at 20 points a game. That no. is true as well, yeah. So it really depends on their mindset because the news is all over the place, right? There's news. There's news saying that, um, you know, not news that they they want to draft Anthony Edwards, and Anthony Edwards and him play the same position. If they feel like they want to draft Anthony Edwards, they might be more willing to cut that salary and trade him or let him walk, if you know, if somebody doesn't give him a back. But there's also I also read some rumors that Golden State. And the Timberwolves are looking to trade their top picks to trade down. So, if that's the reason, if that's if that's the move, then it seems like they might try to save the cap space to resign them. So, it could go either way. It could really go either way. It's a wait and see moment. Ooh, I can't wait for this draft to happen, Ryan. This is, oh, I can't wait. I want to see what's going to happen, man. I know, man. I know. Oh, I can't. Oh. But keep an eye on that situation with the Malik Beasley. And, and, and yeah, definitely keep an eye on that. You know what? Which brings me to some other Knicks news for your head top. Um, listen, Ryan, I know, I know, I know you wanted a metal ball, Ryan. I know you wanted him. <laughs> I know, I know. But that, 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 that's my guy. <laughs> that's your guy. That's your dude. But it's, it's been reported that the Knicks aren't likely to include Mitch Robinson, RJ Barrett, and any trades moving forward. Which is understandable. It's great news. Yes, very good news. Right. The other thing is, though, that uh, they might be needed to. Uh, they might be. They are needed to be included in a trade for Lamella Ball if the Golden State Warriors, you know, all want to get rid of their picks. So it seems more likely than not that the Knicks are not going to get Lamella Ball. I'll say that. Well, well, but well, good which news is, for which the Knicks fans. Oh, good. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Not just that, which is unfortunate, but it is what it is. We we want to keep RJ. We want to keep Mitch. So, God right. just deal. <laughs> Got I'm still good with Killian or Kira. In my head, yeah, right. cool. And I, and I still like the shooter from um, Florida State, Vassal. I okay. still like him. Vassal, that's right, that's right. I forgot you are a, a Vassal fan. You with the Knicks yes. fans? You with the Green? I'm against the Green, but you know, this is why I need I need somebody more with the Green because I've been going against the Green too much. My thing is, my thing has always been. The Knicks are so desperate for a real point guard long term, and I don't see them getting Fred Van Vliet. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't like. I feel like we have to invest in a in a starting point guard at some point, or almost, or or, or or at least try to. And there's people out there who are saying Dennis Smith Jr. is a guy, but I don't, I don't. My heart's not into it. Like his 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 heart don't seem like it's into it sometimes. So I don't have the heart to be into him. <laughs> <laughs> And I love Frank too. Frank has a chance to be a solid starter if you give him the chance, but it can go either way. With Frank, he can be a solid starter or a backup. But so I would like to move DHJ and get a, a starting point guard in here, or more, or another shot at a starting point guard here. Here, that's young and can be groomed. Yeah, which is my, my point of view. All right. Speaking of draft picks that didn't work out. <laughs> Oh boy! All right, is this the whose man's is this segment? I don't know what to go. Uh, this could possibly be whose man's is this. Whose man's is it? Could man's po- it? <laughs> it, it could possibly be. It could possibly be. <laughs> or things that make you go. That might be it. Things that make you go. Hmm. What the hell are they thinking? <laughs> <laughs> so. um... I'm gonna say this: Mark Berman reports. All right, I'm, I'm, I'm preface, preface this with Mark Berman reported this: that free agent Michael Kidd Jules is on the Knicks radar. Yo, I heard the angry snarl, and <laughs> he's rumored. Let me let me tell you, let me tell you the things I noticed about Mark Berman articles in general. When Mark Berman writes articles in general. I f- he comes to conclusions 
in my head by um, relationships a lot. All right. So he writes that, you know, he's a, he's a locker room guy. He's a defensive minded player. Uh, he's also linked to Kenny Payne in, in Kentucky. We all know. Superstar. Developer. Yeah. Kenny Payne. Uh huh. He's also linked to CAA agent Leon Rose. Yeah. You know, he was part of the CAA. Yeah. When, when Leon Rose was a, ran a CAA. Yeah. Uh, uh-huh. And, um,. The Knicks need defense. And being that Tom Pivotal is a defense first guy. Oh, boy. And Michael K. Giltris is a defender. They are interested in Michael Giltris. Now, here's the thing. You know, he doesn't really play much. He gets a lot of DMPs. Yeah. Uh, career 27.2 uh, three-point shooter. Yeah. Doesn't even take threes. He's 103 shots from the three-point line in an eight-year period exactly <laughs> um his jumpers broke his jumpers broke he, he came into the league number two pick in the draft and he's one of those guys where you're like man he's so good at defense and he can't shoot but if he ever puts it all together he's gonna be dangerous and we're here now and it's not together oh boy <laughs> Okay, but, you know, so um, go ahead, go ahead, go, ahead, go, go, go ahead. Michael Kidd Gilchrist. He entered the NBA at 19 years old mm. with the Charlotte Hornets. Yeah. Or, or, or were there Bobcats at that time? I, I don't remember, but, hey, no, but, but, but it was Charlotte. It was Charlotte. Jordan and them. Yeah, Michael Jordan pick. Tells you everything. So, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so my man's been the NBA since 2012-2013 season. Now it's 2019, 2020. My guy's 26 years old. He's still young. But my guy has not shown much improvement in, in a seven-year period, which leads me to believe that what you see is what you get. Yeah. Now, here's, 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 here's something else I want to, you know, actually read. Here's his stats for last season. Oh, Lord. Last season, he played, let's see. 12 games with Charlotte. This is what he averaged in 12 games. Four points a game. 34% 34 shooting from the field. 29% shooting from three. Only averaging 1.5 three-pointers a game. From two-point range, 36.1%. Efficient field goal percent is 38.7%. 2.9 rebounds a game. 0.8 0.8 assists per game. No steals a game. And he's supposed to be a defender, right? Uh, no I steals was, a mm, game. Mm. In 13.3 minutes a game. Then he played 13 games with Dallas. 0.9 points a game. He shot 30.8% from the field. He doesn't uh, even have a three-point percentage on file with Dallas. <laughs> <laughs> This this would be the guy the Knicks would this this would be the guy the Knicks would probably sign. This would be the guy. That would be the guy. <sighs> All my guy can do is play defense, and even that is not getting him playing time. Like, I'm look, I, I've said this numerous times already. We always get the trash from Kentucky. I'm Bruh. tired of that. <laughs> I'm tired of that. <laughs> I don't want no more oh. trash. I don't want no more trash from Kentucky on the oh, Knicks. Oh my god! If if, if, it, if it's not a Devin Booker caliber player, Jamal Murray, or one of those dudes, I do not want him on the Knicks. All right, we have Julius Randle, he, who who is a good player, but he just doesn't fit in the Knicks system. And we have Kevin Knox, which, let's be real, at the moment he seems like Kentucky trash. At the moment, at the moment. I do not want no more. Don't talk about trash. Kevin like that, bro. Don't, don't, don't talk about. Don't let, don't let me. Don't, yo, don't, don't don't let me reach to that screen. I oh, I already said Kevin knocked out one more year. <laughs> he got one more year to prove himself. One more year. He might be. Mm, he might be in OKC. Never mind. 
But but all I'm saying is I want no more Kentucky trash on the Knicks, okay? So Michael Kidd Gilchrist is a big no for me. It's a no for me, dog. No in every language. <laughs> just no, all right? Just no, all right? No. No. Just no. <laughs> just no. Just to reiterate, what you're saying is no? Yes, no. Okay. <laughs> no. Just, just no. I didn't even mean to say yes, then. I meant no, no. Just no, okay. no, 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 no. I mean, maybe it could be that he played horrible defense in his last few years, and he's a defender. Yeah, that too. Because they've been playing him as a big in Charlotte and a big in Dallas. Why? I don't know. That could be a reason. Because when he's playing forwards and wings, his numbers are great. At least the lot percentages are. But then he, he played him a bigs, and then he, he, he falls off a cliff. So, um... I don't, I'm, I'm, he's one of those guys where I just don't see the point. Like, I see the point because Kevin Knox is that awful on defense. We don't know what's going to happen with uh, um, Reggie Bullock. They're not re-signing Mo Harkless. So he would be the new Mo Harkless pretty much. <laughs> you know, the guy and, that plays and, defense and, and, and can't shoot. And if that's the case, I'd rather Mo Harkless here than him. <laughs> he's the upside Mo Harkless. <laughs> He's upside more Harkless, pretty much. Oh, boy. Uh, so, I would hope he would be like an end of the bench guy, if anything. But I feel like he's gonna want to play or want to start him. But I don't know if anybody's even gonna give him that opportunity. I don't even. See, I don't see it. I don't see it either. But yeah, it's a no for me, dog. Too. Yeah, it's a no. It's a, it's a no. Nah. Sorry, sorry, Malik. Damn, Ryan, you're so harsh. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, shout out to my YouTube commenters, man, who people who engage in the show. Uh, first, I'm gonna shout out uh, Ronald Dennis. Ronald Dennis, our commenter, he he said, "Hey guys, look up Corey Kispert of Gonzaga. He's very similar to Kyle Crover. You can get uh, Kispert in the second round in his draft. Please let me know what you think." Now, last week we were talking about movement shooters and guys who can, you know feel that Duncan Robinson role. So um, we were talking about uh, Nee Smith in the first round, possibly if you choose, if you choose to trade down. Um, after checking out this guy that he recommended, um, I like what I see. He's pretty, Kyle Culver is a pretty good comparison to man. Good movement shooter, just like Kyle, quick release. Um, plays decent defense. He looks like he might be... Uh, slightly better defender than Kyle Culver, but because his hands are a little active, but you know the athleticism, uh, definitely the athleticism of of Kyle Corey for for sure. So pretty good comp <laughs> for sure. I would be open to drafting him, um, depending on who we draft in the in the first round and such. So yeah, I w- I wouldn't mind him in the second round. Well, what do you have to lose for the second round? If you get a, a decent shooter, I'm with it. All right. All right. Uh, next comment. I know I'm going to give the floor to Ryan right now because Ryan said he had some things he wanted to talk about from the YouTube commenters. Uh, so, Ryan, what you got to say, man? All right. Well, I'm, a, I'm going to address two YouTube commenters. One's going to be safe for the broad pick, though. So, oh! Okay. Yes. Well, never mind. <laughs> so um the so the so um, the comment I'm going to answer is from Brian Williford. Um, so he asked, would y'all be okay with the CP3 trade if instead of us getting a pick in the, in the deal, Rose is able to get us Dort in the deal? And here's my question. I mean, here's my answer to it. Um, Dort, I like Dort. You know, he's a good young player. He's good on the defensive end. He was, he was doing a pretty good job on Harden in the playoffs when OKC was going up against the Rockets. Mm-hmm. But my thing is... I'm more concentrating on the Knicks getting shooting. And Dort needs work on his jumper. His jumper is not there yet. Because if you were watching the series against OKC, uh, with OKC and the Rockets, the Rockets were often leaving him open. And yes, he had games where he did, you know, knock in the three. But then he had other games where he was just cold as hell and he was actually hurting OKC on offense. Right. So... I think at the moment, 
I would rather a shooter. Okay. You know, than you know, than a guy who's just a defender at the moment, but so you know, if 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 if, the, if he is to be included in the trade with CP3, I'd probably take him on. You know, but Again, like I said, like I'm not sure if he's actually a need for the Knicks. I feel you. I mean, it's one of those things where, like, if you're not going to get a first round draft pick in a trade for CP3, which is what I would want instead of giving them one, which I don't think they see it that way because of his talent level. Yeah. The next best thing would be to get a young player. They're not going to give up shy. Kill. They're not going to give up shy. That's that's shy Alexander. That's not happening. If they if they included him, no, that's, that's a whole different story. <laughs> that's a whole different story. But uh, that's probably that's not happening. Uh, yeah, I, I think I'm with Ryan on this one. I think I'm with Ryan on this one. It'll be you no, know, it'll be no for me, dog. Um, I'd be on the fence about the Kevin Knox man. I'm on the fence about Kevin Knox. Like you said, if he's included in a deal for. For uh, CP3, and funny enough, you mentioned that because I also listening to that pod with Nick's Film School and Ian Beckley was on, and they asked, they asked, he asked Beckley, "Do you believe that the Knicks have a chance at CP3?" And he said yes, and he said he feels like there's a forty percent chance Ooh. that Knicks would get free get CP3. Uh, when asked about Van Fleet, for Van Fleet, he pretty much said he feels like there's almost no chance. <laughs> <laughs> and Berman also reported that the Knicks are hesitant on offering Fred Van Fleet the max to get him to New York. Uh, I would hope so. <laughs> <laughs> so that's two reporters who feel like it's a no for me, dog. Yeah. DJ Augustine. Possibly. Might be here. Draft Kara. Just saying. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now. In the time. I can't wait for this. <laughs> for one of the favorite parts of the show. Bruh. The bruh picks. There is no Knicks basketball right now. So the bruh picks are. Usually the worst plays of the week, but as of now, it's just going to be, uh, you know, something stupid that happened. It could be light bras. It could be a commenter that Ryan doesn't like. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Hmm. Uh, I'm going to um, pass this off to Ryan. Take it away, Ryan. Okay, so, um, Nick's listeners, I want you to go to, um, episode i believe episode 130 which you know it's titled chris paul rumor kira meets with nicks building new york the miami blueprint part two free agents and when you go to that episode scroll all the way down <laughs> and, you, and you're going to see somebody who's supposedly a raptors fan oh, and, and 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 the and this is the and well he left two comments these are the comments that he decided to leave on our podcast remember this guy's a raptors fan he's not even a knicks fan he's a raptors fan okay which means that he should be happy in life he shouldn't be this miserable okay <laughs> so he left a comment saying van vliet will definitely not play for you losers no matter what bag you throw at him freddie a champ knicks are a g league team in fact i bet raptors 905 can beat the knicks in a seven game series First and foremost, realistically, no G League team can beat an NBA team. Okay, so already this dude is talking out of his mouth. And number two, we've said repeatedly new, on numerous occasions, do we think Van Vliet is a possibility? We, we know it's not a possibility, but this is a Knicks podcast. And on a Knicks podcast, we're going to talk about possible free agents. We're a Knicks show. We think we're on Dash Radio. Exactly. Knicks show. Exactly where we're going to we're going to talk about different free agents and you know free agents that there's a possibility at who's available. That's what we do. We're a to we're we're basically a talk show. So 
for him to have the audacity to leave a comment like that on our show is just stupid number one and now he also left one more yeah he said one more comment then he proceeded to say the Knicks fan base is the most delusional out of touch group of individuals I have ever heard in my life what makes you think you will get anyone in free agency or even draft someone that pans out I feel so bad for y'all so again this guy's a Raptors fan people shouldn't he be happy didn't his team win a championship the previous <laughs> season Bruh. Why is he going? Oh, why is he so? Why is he going so hard at at a Knicks podcast? Just because Knicks we're show. talking about the possibility, <laughs> yeah, Knicks show. Talking about just because we're talking about possibly signing one of the players from his squad. Clearly, this man is miserable. Clearly, he probably lives in his mom's basement. Oh my god! <laughs> like honestly, what's wrong with this guy? Like, did you see? This is what I can't stand when people just feel like they want to come and just you know, make fun of the Knicks because we're such a target or whatever the case may be. And then on top of that, you you know, you're cheering for a good team. Like, why are you so miserable, guy? Get a girl, man. Bruh. What's wrong with you? Get a girl. Do something with your life. I mean, damn. Uh, is, your music, is your music even good? Oh, God. Bruh. <laughs> Yo, Ryan. I mean, I mean, damn. Yo, chill, chill. <laughs> all right, all right, all right, all right. That's your corner. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh, my God. Go listen to a Raptors okay. show or a Raptors podcast, man. What's wrong with you, man? Bruh. That's our show, guys. All right, guys. <laughs> you, you right. Right. Right, man. Yo. Listen. YouTubers are going to YouTube, dog. I ain't. Listen. Yeah, I know. YouTube, YouTube, dog. That's what YouTube is. You have I know, man. I know. You have the YouTubers back. Yeah, it's, it's cool. All right. I know, and you know, this is YouTube, which is why I went so hard on them. It's YouTube, so. <laughs> yeah, I don't even care. I'm like, I already know what it is. This is a Raptors fan and a Brooklyn Nets fan. I already know what the vibe is. I don't even care. Yeah. But Ryan has something to say. He went all full Scorpio. <laughs> <laughs> all right, man. <laughs> I got nothing to say after that. That's our show. Uh... You can listen to us on the YouTube.com slash the Nick and Time Show. Shout out to Dash Ready for housing us. Hope you still like us after this. Um, <laughs> <laughs> listeners, commenters, thanks for your comments. I uh, appreciate the love, man. Um, yo, I'm thinking about doing a Patreon, man. I'm thinking about doing a Patreon because, listen, to be honest with you, I'm paying for a bunch of stuff out of pocket. <laughs> We doing this show for a few years. We want, we're getting on video. I want to expand. I want to. Ha- I want to have a nice team of writers. I want to have edit. I want to have art. I want to be able to give people the chance to go with us and actually, you know, pay them for you know their services and stuff. So I'm thinking about starting a Patreon to get things started. Let me know what you guys think. Would Would you be up for that? What What should we offer? Let us know. All right. But shout out to Dash Radio. Shout out to uh, the writers who write for us who's still rocking with us at the Nick of Time Show dot com. You can check cast the blogs there. Um, also, follow us on the KLT Show on Twitter, Nick of Time Show on Instagram, and you can follow us on Facebook as well. It hasn't been that active. I've been actually taking some classes on the back end and some stuff, trying to get the stuff together on the back end on business wise for Nick of Time Show. But this wrapping up, I will be back to to, to the regularly scheduled program. And hopefully, you know, get this nigga time growing even bigger than it was before. Uh-huh. And that's our show. You can find me on Instagram as well at JLS Draws Things. And where can they find you, sir? You can find me on Instagram at Sir G is Chillin'. Sir G is Chillin'. That is S I R G is C H I L L I N. That's right. We out of here, man. Peace. New York, New York, big city of dreams. Come, 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 come straight out, out. New York, New York, big city of dreams. N-N-N-N-Y-C.